Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for supporting me and, and thank you for the wonderful comments that you make. I really do appreciate it. The first item that I have in the news is a video by Tucker Carlson, an interview with a man named Felix Rodriguez. Felix Rodriguez was uh, not an American citizen, but he worked for the CIA, which is interesting to me. And he knew Che Guevara personally and was involved in the uh, period of time when Guevara was assassinated by the Brazilians. Was it Brazilian? Uh, no, Bolivians, excuse me. Assassinated by the Bolivians. So... That's a very interesting interview, and I think you might enjoy watching it. It's rather lengthy. It's about 48 minutes long. But I thought you might like to see that. Uh, the second article that I have is one that I find very disturbing. Um, and I'm going to show it to you. You can see the headline, Harvesting Voters, These Left-Wing Groups Are Teeming with USDA. If you read the article, it's more than just the USDA. There are several bureaucracies in the United States that are teaming up with Democrats on what they call get-out-the-vote efforts, but they're get-out-the-Democrat-vote efforts. And... I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. You don't use the government to politic. You just don't do that. In fact, I think it's illegal. I'm pretty sure it's illegal. I think it's called the Hatch Act. And yet here we are. I mean, they just completely ignore the law. They just totally ignore what the law says. Joe Biden wrote an executive order uh, asking the taxpayer-funded agencies to advance his re-election. I don't know... I don't know how we put a stop to this, but it needs to stop. It needs to not be done by uh, anybody, Republican, Democrat, I don't care what your politics are. You do not use government agencies to run your campaigns. That just is wrong, 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 wrong. Government agencies should be apolitical. And if there are people in a government agency that are politicizing the agency, they should be fired. Plain and simple. This next article I have is called Unscientific American. And it talks about how science journalism has surrendered to progressive ideology. <clears throat> I'm just going to read a little bit to, uh, to you. Michael Shermer got his first clue that things were changing at Scientific American in late 2018. The author had been writing his skeptic column for the magazine since 2001. His monthly essays, aimed at an audience of both scienti scientists and laymen, championed the scientific method, defended the need for evidence-based debate, <coughs> excuse me, and explored how cognitive and ideological biases can derail the search for truth. Shermer's role models included two 20th century thinkers who, like him, relished explaining science to the public. Carl Sagan, the ebullient astronomer, and TV commentator and revolutionary biologist, evolutionary, excuse me, evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould, who wrote a popular monthly column in Natural History magazine for 25 years. Shermer hoped someday to match Gould's record of producing 300 consecutive columns. That goal will elude him. In continuous publication since 1845, Scientific American is the country's leading mainstream science magazine. Authors published in its pages have included Albert Einstein, Francis Crick, Jonas Salk, and J. Robert Oppenheimer, some 200 Nobel Prize winners in all. SIAM, as many readers call it, has long encouraged its authors to challenge established viewpoints. 
In the mid 20th century, for example, the magazine published a series of articles building the case for the then radical concept of plate tectonics. In the 21st century, however, American scientific media, including Scientific American, began to slip into lockstep with progressive beliefs. Suddenly, certain orthodoxies, especially concerning race, gender, or climate, could not be questioned. The article goes on to describe how he was let go by the magazine because his opinions didn't fit with what they wanted to hear. Now, I don't know about you, but I have to tell you that getting politics and political ideologies into the sciences is frightening beyond belief to me. It really is frightening to me. And the reason why it's frightening is because when ideology becomes your raison d'etre, you no longer are worried about being accurate with the science. And when you're not worried about being, about being accurate with the science, what does that say about doctors? Think about that. Would you want to be treated by a doctor whose reason for existence was his ideology, his or her ideology, not, not scientific accuracy and caring for the patient? We saw that with COVID-19, didn't we? They all fell into lockstep behind Anthony Fauci. And I'll have something about him tomorrow. This last article, high percentage of federal prisoners are crimi criminal aliens or non-citizens. And I have highlighted some things I wanted you to see. <clears throat> According to the census, in 2014, about 7% of the U.S. population were non-citizens or aliens, many of them illegal immigrants. Um, I shared a link with you yesterday of a CPAC speech, which if you haven't watched, you might want to watch, because in that speech, the woman that is speaking uh, reveals that over 50% of the populations of most European countries now are immigrants. If you don't think that's going to change your culture, you're deluded. <laughs> it won't be long before most of Europe is Muslim. Not, not that there's anything wrong with Muslims, but there is something drastically wrong with the Muslims that don't want to allow anyone else to exist. And that's what you're facing in Europe. So anyway, getting back to the article, that's about 1 in 14 people. Yet the GAO says that criminal aliens accounted for 1 in 5 and as many as 1 in 4 prison inmates during the time period analyzed. That works out to about triple the number of criminal aliens that there should have been if they had committed crime at the same rate as U.S. citizens. So when we're allowing all these illegal immigrants in, we're not just getting good-hearted people who want to work and, and pursue the American dream. We're also getting people who want to break the law. The actual picture is likely worse since the GAO report only looked at a subset of imprisoned illegal aliens and other criminal aliens. According to the report, primary data came from the Department of Justice State Criminal Alien Assistance Program, which reimburses a portion of criminal alien incarceration costs. GAO used SCAAP data because there are no reliable data available on all criminal aliens incarcerated in every U.S. state, prison, and local jail, reads the report. On top of that, GAO notes that there have been a decrease in the number of states and localities participating in the program, resulting in lower numbers reported. What that means is that the numbers of illegal aliens that are in prison because they've committed crimes and been convicted of them in the United States is even higher than what's being reported. 
That ought to be a statistic that opens the eyes of every politician on, in Washington. But it's not. They don't care. Republican or Democrat, they don't care. They don't care if your family is preyed upon. They don't care if criminal aliens or, or illegal aliens take your jobs. They don't care if they come into our country and completely change the culture to something that it wasn't. They don't care if these people don't know anything about the Constitution. We need an entirely new government. We need a miracle, and only God can provide those. As I do every time I make a video, I pray for you. I pray that you will have an abundant life, that you'll live a long time, that you'll be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he will do that same thing for every person that you love. But I pray most of all that you, my viewers, will be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.